This tutorial was brought to you thanks to the supporters on the screen. Check out tapjiles.com to find more Dreams resources, donate to support my work, or engage my services to get private instruction or help on a project one on one. In the previous tutorial, I showed how to build puppets that patrol in a particular route. Check the description for a link to that. Now I'll allow multiple puppets to patrol in separate patterns in a way that's efficient both on thermo and performance. So we have a patrol route. Now we want to store what this follower is finding. So if I get a signal manipulator and put this target position into it, so we're going to turn the strength and damping off because this is just like a detector for where the tag is that we want to target. So if we play, then we turn on this patrol route. It's found that tag over there and it's outputting it. And I'm just representing this by this number. And then we can turn on freeze output and then we can turn off the patrol route. And it's still remembered where the position is that it needs to go to. So we're going to use this method to very quickly find out where it needs to go to and then store it and then allow it to um, move towards it. So we'll make a timeline and we'll use L1 and right on the D-pad and we get these uh, columns because we zoomed in and these are frames of logic. So it's, there's 30 frame logic frames where it processes all the logic 30 times a second. Um, and this is what this is representing. So we can do very fine-tuned timings of logic in here. So let's put this in here. We only need this to be powered for a brief time. Uh, if we grab the end of it. So now it's just powered for one frame, for example. So you don't need a signal manipulator to pulse to power something for one frame. You can just put it in a timeline. Um, just don't mess with... Just leave playback speed at 100%. And then it should all work properly because if you change that speed, then it will change the speed of these frames in here. We kind of need different modes of this, actually, basically. So I'll have a selector. So normally it's not going to do anything. When it wants to do something, it will go into B. Um, the I'll just give you a quick overview of the selector. Selector has many channels and only one is lit up and sending a signal at a time and you can tell it which channel to be active and sending a signal uh, in various ways. So you can use this for making kind of modes of behavior. So I'll just put that back to two and it defaults to A so we can use that for our not really doing anything mode. So when we tell it to go into B for now we can just send a signal into it like that. So, so if I play time and then turn on that switch. Now it's on B forever until we tell it to be a different channel in whatever way. So once we're in B, we're going to play this timeline, which will figure out where we need to go. So we'll power the timeline and we'll put that into once mode. This means that when it gets, it starts getting power, it will go back to the start and then play all the way to the end. So we can kind of be sure that it's going to do all these things in the correct order and everything. So we'll, we'll find the waypoint. We also want the route to be active. Uh, so let's put that in there. And we want to then freeze the signal manipulator. So actually what we can do is we can put this freezing keyframe into this timeline and have it kind of hanging off the end. So we'll do that and then make it really long and then cut it off. So while this timeline is still powered the playhead will still be stuck at the end and you can see it's still powering that last thing that's kind of hanging off the end of this timeline so you can just keep this timeline powered and it will do some setup logic and then stay in a in a state of kind of moving towards the tag it needs to move to so let's just test out and see if this uh, this timing works by playing time and then we'll put it into that mode so it's not actually finding the um, target. This is because it usually takes um, a frame uh, before it actually finds anything, like with trigger zones. So we'll make this a bit longer by zooming in and drag the end. 
like that. Uh, let's see if it works now. Uh, right. Let's just test by slowing this way down. So it the the tag turns on. So we've got this keyframe in here, and we will turn on fr freeze on the signal manipulator. So now if we play time, this number should change and then stick to the some number. So let's play it. So now it's stuck like that, but now all those trigger zones and stuff, they don't need to do anything now because we know where we're going towards. So if we have another uh, follower and we'll wire this, uh, this target position that we found into the target position of the follower, and I'll just reset this stuff, give it high strength. We don't need that because we're actually setting the uh, position. But we don't want this to be happening like if we play time. We haven't send it we haven't figured out where it's meant to go, so it's going to default to just sending a zero, which means it's trying to get to the zero of the scene, which is if we if we turn on the floor guide is over here that that's the center of the scene so that's zero 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 in the uh in the kind of position of the scene so we only want this to turn on after we've figured this stuff out so i think i'll just put a keyframe in here leave that off and only while we've found where to go we'll turn it on so this is now a go keyframe so it's not going to go anywhere until we Calculate where to go and that's all sorted. So that needs to again kind of come off the edge like that So now we're in the following mode um, But because once we get to this spot <laughs> Oh, that was funny. So there's kind of this bug that will happen because it's trying to follow towards that spot on the ground um, but it's using the center of the object so then it's dragging the center of the object down and it's going to look really weird so what we can do is just ignore y entirely so we can turn these down and now it will only move it in the x and z which is along this plane and not the y which is kind of the jump direction oh that's in the wrong thing uh, we actually need to do that in the follower itself that's actually acting on the puppet this was the detection follower so we'll do that over here and now we'll try it out again so now it isn't being dragged down so that's good cool so once we get to this other spot over here we want to kind of rewind this timeline so if i just grab that and wire that into rewind then we can test and see if that will work so let's go into the right mode and then I can send a signal to restart this timeline. I think that's the new place. So now if I rewind that timeline, it's going to recheck and find a new spot. And then we can do it again. And we can use so we can figure out when we need to start when we need to find a new position to move towards. So we're going to do that by comparing the we can't use a trigger zone or something because this these tags are going to be off most of the time but we can compare the stored target position with the position we are currently at so if we first make sure this dot is in a useful place so we we'll use the grid and we we'll use l1 and triangle on the puppet and grab this gizmo let's put that between the feet and then we can put a tag position there as well Ah, uh, yeah, that reminds me. So this this patroller tag is going to be detected by the trigger zones, which can which may af may mess up the um, when another character is trying to find out where to go. So if you put that into the timeline as well, and that, and we'll have another uh, one of these tags though, and that's this is between the feet, and it doesn't matter what what this is called. We'll just have it not be called patroller mainly. And then this has a position which is between the feet of the character. Um, but we can actually get this out as a normal position. So if we close that down. So uh, we've got this tag and we want to get the position. So if we get a splitter, 
because again this is a fat wire with lots of values lots of colors going on and now we have the position orientation and scale of this tag so we want the position um, and we have the, the target position over here so if we just move these around a bit so we can subtract one position from the other using a calculator to find out how far away we are from it so subtract like that and if we use another splitter you can see it's another fat wire because it, uh, it received two positions it will subtract the x y and z from the x y and z of the other position and then output a new position which is the difference between those two effectively but there's a useful trick with fat wires is that they have a default value which is kind of built in and is usually some useful value so if we use a combiner we can actually get that default value out and see what it is let's just make a demo actually over here so i have two tags and we'll split them both and then we'll subtract one position from the other position then we use uh, we can use a combiner to get this default position out that we were talking about so we just put it into the positive and then it will output just that um, it will kind of collapse down into just that default value and we can use a number displayer put that over there and now if we play time you can see as this moves towards the other one it becomes a smaller number and as we move away it becomes a bigger number so it's actually the distance between these two positions so this default value for a position type is the distance between uh, from zero to the position so because we're subtracting one from the other we're finding a position that starts here and moves out to here for example um, and then the default value will be the distance between here and here so we can use that principle back in our character so we've got our combiner and then I think for now we'll just output what it's giving us and then we'll get it to move and then it goes down and down until we're really close to it and then it's a very small number and then we'll find the next one same thing happens so we can say if it's below some number then we'll re-trigger this so let's put that into a calculator and say if it's below that should do and then we'll trigger this to rewind so now let's just put it into that mode so as it gets to to the next point it turns them on again and recalculates and starts moving to the next place so let's just put put all this into a chip and we can copy that chip over to this one and that will do the same but we want to replace that um, that patrol route with this other patrol route oh, and we want to uh, reset that to 100% and then it will be going really fast so it's kind of almost instantaneously finding the next one so we'll leave this puppet off for now and where is that tag oh did that tag move oh it's way up there uh, there's a bug with dreams right now where if you move a uh, some gadgets that have gizmos um, between chips or into a timeline and things like that the gizmo can just go flying off into the distance so I'll just reset that right and then between the feet okay so that's working fine um, cool so if I just turn this back on now um, and I'll have a for a quick test I'll just have this unpowered for a, a brief period at the start in this timeline oh that needs to be longer so 
at two frames. The tag should only be powered while it's finding the spot, otherwise it will be powered all the time. So let's just adjust that as well. Okay. So we're kind of getting lucky there because they're not quite coinciding. Um, but they could theoretically. So this is where the where exclusive gates come in. We only want one of these to work at any particular time. Um, but it for it to kind of want to work, uh, to, to know when it wants to kind of start this stuff and find out its next position. So the exclusive gate is this uh, fence gate, gate post, fence, picket, picket, picket gate, fence post thing. Uh, gadget um, and the idea is you can give it a name so if we give it a name and then we have another one that has the same name they will interact with each other and um, such that we have some switches happening only ones that are are being sent a a signal like that will be able to open and then it's it will go black when it's opened. This is known as being active and you have this active signal coming out as well. So that one's not active. If we turn this other one on, that one's already active so that this one doesn't come on. But if this one has a higher priority, then it will take over and become the active one. If we put it into a queue mode, and uh, both of them into a queue mode, uh, now this means if I, uh, if I have three of these actually, so we've got three of these and they're all in queue mode. If we turn them on one by one and then we tell this one to close by sending it a value into the close input, then the next one in the list will become the next active one. So now let's close that one and then that one's open and then when we close this one that one's open because this one has still got something going through it so that's the general idea you can kind of have only one of them active at a given time and you can put them into a queue so that all of them will be gotten to and that is useful for this particular case so we're going to have an exclusive gate in here Yeah, so this is going to be called find root. That. We need a state where we want to calculate it, but we haven't yet. So that will be that will be the B mode, and that will go into the gate input. So while we want to calculate it, but we're not allowed to yet, we'll send a signal into the find root um, exclusive gate. And then once this is actually allowed to go, because it's the next one in the queue, then we'll change this into the C mode. And I'll just route that around like that. Into C mode. And that will power this and um, rewind as well. And then when we actually get to our destination, instead of it directly acting on the timeline, we'll wire this into the B mode so that it um, it now requests being allowed to calculate its next destination um, and then it will still wait again and and then when it's allowed to then it will go into this mode so right now the exclusive gates there there's only one of these so it won't clash with any of them the other ones so it'll just work oh it's because that yeah we just want this to pulse on if um, this is sending a signal forever and this is sending a signal because we're still at at um, the destination we were going for then it will never know to change to B because it's still just receiving a signal from somewhere so if we turn that on then it will pulse into B and then stop trying to um, change it no that isn't working let me try this other method And this is purely for testing, by the way, so I don't matter too much. Okay. So each time it gets to its destination, uh, that needs to be in queue mode, though. 
Uh, when it gets to its destination, it will stop there. And because this this one hasn't been closed, um, then it hasn't opened up again to be able to go into the um, go into the recalculating mode. So we need to make sure this closes once we've actually figured out the calculation, once we've figured out the destination, so that an, so that the next um, character can figure out its destination and so on. So if we open this timeline again, we can put a a switch into here that set, tells it to close. Um, so now, now it's closed itself uh, once it's done this uh, calculation, and that's all working fine. So if we, I'll just tidy up this um, this wiring, and then I'll copy it over again. So now let's copy that over to here again, and grab the patrol route. So we can put it in here, the old one. Put that in there. So now this one's patrolling and that one's patrolling, but only one of them is ever recalculating at any given time. So this is the one for the blue, and this is the one for the green head. And only one of them is ever going from the start and calculating its stuff at any given time. So that now they'll never clash. It works. So uh, yeah, now let's just add some niceties, like um, so that uh, rotating it so it's facing the right direction. So let's stick on a rocket rotator, which takes the the direction of movement and will rotate the object to match that. So if I just that so it's pointing in the direction it should be facing then it will rotate to face that direction thanks for watching i hope you learned something new go to patreon.com slash tap giles to get five hours of tutorials early for three dollars here's a preview of what you can learn if you choose to become a supporter